Hi friends, welcome to day two of my beginners program. Today we are going to be covering Sun A, also known as Surya Namaskar A. Traditionally, Surya Namaskar A has been practiced to welcome in the new day, but today you can find it in many yoga classes and it helps us warm up our body to prepare us for our practice. It helps improve our mental focus and concentration. It improves our strength our stability, our flexibility, and it also helps us connect our breath to our movement. I used yoga to lose weight and get in shape after having children. If you're looking to get your body back, this series is for you. So several of you have left the feedback that my Get Your Body Back program was a little too challenging, especially if you're just starting out in your yoga journey. So that's why I listened to your concerns and I designed this 14-day program to help you ease into it and get more familiar with what yoga is about. So to start off, I'm going to have us come into child's pose. Child's pose typically is where we go when we need to take a little break and rest, and that's why I'm starting us off there. Just as a reminder, excuse me, sweetheart, I'm gonna move you to the side. So we're gonna go ahead and come onto our knees and bring our knees as wide as the mat and our toes are gonna be together. And then we're just gonna slide our fingertips towards the top of the mat. Sorry, sweetheart. And then bring the forehead to the ground. And this is the opportunity to just notice what's going on in your head, in your body. Notice if you're feeling pain, tension, or tightness anywhere without trying to change anything. <laughs> Stella's coming underneath. Notice your breath and your heartbeat. And then speaking of distractions, See if you can bring your thoughts back to your breath if you find yourself distracted. Just a couple more deep breaths here. Slowing it down. Cultivating, again, what we call the ujjayi breath. Nice, deep, diaphragmatic breath. Breathing in and out through the nose. Letting your exhales be audible. And your exhales are a little bit longer than your inhale. So if we take four or five seconds for the inhale, see if you can take maybe five or six seconds for your exhale. And then as you're ready, you can slowly rise up, coming on to your hands and knees into our tabletop position. And she's insisting to use my mat to sleep on. I know it's comfortable. All right, we're gonna stack our wrists under our shoulders. Our fingers are nice and wide and our knees are stacked under the hips. We're just warming up our spine with some cat and cow. So inhale, push your tailbone up, slowly curve the spine, lift the crown of the head at the end of your inhale for your cow pose. And exhale, slowly curving your spine, pulling your belly in and up, chin to the chest for your cat pose. And just four more cycles like this, following your own breath, inhaling into your cow. Exhale into your cat. Nice and slow. Keeping it organic adding more movement if it feels good in your body if you want to circle your hips clockwise and counterclockwise whatever feels good to you and as you're ready we're slowly going to come to a stand at the top of our mat nice and slow Make sure not to rush this process. Just roll up one vertebrae at a time. Keep your chin tucked towards your chest and then slowly straighten out your head. You wanna make sure that you don't get up too quickly because you don't want all the blood to rush to your head and feel dizzy. So into Dasana, mountain pose. We're going to keep our feet about hip distance apart. 
And again, there are so many different ways to do sun A. This is my variation. So take it with a grain of salt and again, feel what feels right in your body. If you want to modify, if you want to bring your toes together, your heels out, if that feels better in your body, then by all means, please do that. So I like to have my feet about hip distance apart. And then we want to make sure all four corners of the feet are pressing into the ground evenly. So to begin with, we can just slowly rock into the balls of our feet and then slowly rocking back into our heels, maybe lift the toes off the ground and just notice how that feels. You may feel a little bit unsteady and then slowly coming back to center and finding that sweet spot where you're feeling balanced and there's this equilibrium between effort and ease. So moving on up to the knees, you wanna make sure your knees are not locking out. So keep a micro bend in the knees and then bringing your attention to your belly, pull the belly button in towards the spine to engage the core. Next, the shoulders are gonna come down and the shoulder blades pull together on the back. And then you can bring the palms of your hands together, thumbs pressed against the sternum. Lengthening the neck, again, your chin is slightly tucking in towards your chest to lengthen the back of your neck. And if you'd like, you can even close your eyes or you can keep a soft gaze forward. So always remember to breathe. Don't hold your breath here. Deep, slow, ujjayi breaths, nice. And full, inhale through the nose. And slowly exhale back out through the nose. Another variation of Tadasana, you can keep your arms alongside your body with your fingers nice and wide. Imagining laser beams shoot out from your fingertips, as my yoga instructor has said. So we still want that full body engagement all the way from the top of the head to the bottoms of our feet. Finding length, the top of your head is growing towards the sky and the bottoms of your feet are really rooting down into the ground. So. If your eyes were closed and some up, someone came up next to you and gave you a little shove, you would barely budge. Just another full deep breath here. And this feeling of strength and steadiness and the balance between effort and ease, you wanna find this pose, this Tadasana feeling in every single pose that you do in yoga. I think it was Iyengar who said, every pose contains Tadasana. So remember this feeling and try to embody that in the rest of your practice. The next pose from here is called Urdhva Hastasana. So we're gonna sweep the arms up. And you can stay here. What I like to do is grab the left wrist with the right hand and gently give it a pull upwards. And with the exhale, lean over to the right, stretch out the left side of the body. And then inhale back to center, switch the grip, pull up. And with the exhale, lean over to the left, stretching out the right side of the body. Make sure you're still stepping evenly through both feet. Inhale back to center, and then you have an option for a little back bend if that feels good. And then with your exhale, swan dive, bringing your arms out to the sides and hinge at the hips and slowly come to your forward fold, Uttanasana. So while we're here in our forward fold, make sure, again, you're not locking your knees out so you can keep a slight bend or even a deep bend in your knees, whatever you prefer. And you can grab opposite elbows if you'd like. Let your head be loose and heavy here. You can slowly sway side to side if that feels good. Continue your deep breaths here. You can nod your head, yes, shake it, no. We're hanging loose and heavy like a rag doll. There's no forceful movement here. You're letting gravity do the work for you, slowly pulling you closer to earth. You can take a few deep breaths here just to let your body settle. Feeling a nice stretch in the backs of your legs. And if you have tight hamstrings, then I definitely recommend keeping that bend in the knees. All right, from here, we're gonna bring the hands to the shins, straighten out the legs, and come into Ardha Uttanasana. 
or half lift. So pull shoulders back away from the ears, lengthening the neck and the spine, reaching the top of the head forward and the tailbone is reaching back. And as you exhale, come back into your forward fold. From here, we're just gonna plant the hands on the ground and then step the feet back into a plank. If plank is too much for you, you can lower your knees to the ground. Otherwise, challenge yourself and see if you can keep your knees up, push out through the heels of your foot, and then reach forward, finding length from the top of your head to the bottoms of your heels, pulling belly in, your whole body's engaged, and then we're going to slowly lower our body in Chaturanga, Dandasana. So rock forward and slowly keeping your elbows over wrists, lower down all the way to the ground. So I'm going to repeat that. And this time I'm going to show you the variation with knees down. If your knees are down, you're going to lower your chin and then you're going to slowly Roll back down, forehead to the ground, and we're going to inhale into Cobra, Bhujangasana. Here you want to push your toenails firmly into the ground, continue pulling your arms in towards the body, lengthen the back of the neck. So you don't want to look up too much because then you're really curving your spine and you keep finding length by looking down a little bit. Ch tuck your chin in towards your chest with the exhale lower down. If you want a little more intensity, you also have the option for upward facing dot. <clears throat> so pushing your palms into the ground, straightening the arms, keeping the backs of your feet and your palms only on the ground. Everything else is off the ground. Your chest is lifted. And then from here, tuck your toes under and lift your hips up and back into downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. So in downward dog, really ease your body into it. You can pedal your feet, pushing one heel to the ground and then the other. Your feet are about hip distance apart still. Your hands are about shoulder width apart. And you want to make sure that you're keeping the weight and the pressure out of your wrist. So really push down through the base knuckles of your fingers. There's almost like a little suction cup underneath the palms of your hands. And you're continuing to push your chest towards your thighs and your heels slowly towards the ground, pedaling it out and then maybe even keeping a little bend in the knees if your hamstrings are especially tight. And then you can play with slowly straightening one leg and then the other. And then the more you do this, the more your body starts to give and you're gonna find that straightening your legs is a little more accessible for you. So again, continue those deep breaths here. In and out through the nose. Keep your neck nice and long. Your shoulders are away from the ears. And then from here, we're just gonna make our way back to the top of the mat. So either you can slowly walk your feet or instead of walking your feet, you can step one foot into a lunge and then the other foot and then slowly Rolling back up into your Tadasana Mountain Pose. All right, so before we do this all again, I invite you to go ahead and go back to your child's pose if you feel like you need a break. Also, you can grab water, towel off, whatever you need to do to reset yourself so that you're ready to do this once again a little bit quicker, linking the breath to the movement. And then also, uh, I want to bring up that the definition of yoga by Patanjali, who wrote the Yoga Sutras, um, he says that yoga chitta vritti naroda, which means yoga is the cessation of the fluctuations of your mind. So essentially, the practice of yoga is inherently designed to help us become aware of our thought processes and then to 
reclaim our power instead of letting our emotions get the best of us. So if you find yourself distracted at all, just take notice of that and then see if you can bring your thoughts back to your breath to be in the present moment. And don't judge yourself, have compassion for yourself. It's just like any other exercise, it's gonna take work every single day, but just that little ability to catch yourself and then redirect your thought process is the most empowering thing that we can do for ourselves. So as you're ready, let's go ahead and begin at the top of our mat once again in our Tadasana Mountain Pose. Our feet are hip distance apart, bring the hands together, pressing the thumbs against the sternum, or if you prefer, you can keep your hands alongside the body. Take a deep breath in. We're gonna inhale, sweep the arms up, grab the left wrist, pull up with the exhale. Let's lean over to the right. Inhale, back to center, switch your grip, pull up. Exhale to lean left. Remember, push evenly through both feet. Inhale, back to center, option for your back bend. And with your exhale, we're gonna swan dive, hinging at the hips and coming to a forward fold. With the inhale, we're gonna take our half lift. Shoulders pulling away from ears. With the exhale, we come into our fold, plant the hands. And step the feet back. You can lower the knees if you'd like, otherwise stay in your plank and then lowering for our chaturanga. Rock the top of the head forward and then keep your elbows over your wrists, letting the inside of your arms graze only halfway if you're going into upward facing dog, rolling over your feet, straightening out your arms, lifting your heart up. You also have the option for cobra on your belly. And then with your exhale, Rolling over your toes, pushing up and back into your downward facing dog. Once again, downward facing dog is considered a resting pose. It's an active resting pose. If you need to, always remember you can lower your knees to the ground, bring your head to the ground and go into your child's pose. I know that was a lot that we just did, but be kind to yourself. It's not a race. It's all about our intention to see growth and build resilience in our body one step at a time. All right, once you're ready, we're gonna go ahead and come back, do this one last time. Coming back to the hands and knees, tuck your toes under and lift yourself up and back into downward facing dog. You can step one foot in between the hands or walk your feet forward and then step the other one into your forward fold. Inhale to lengthen the spine. Exhale to fold. Slight bend in the knees. Push down through the bottoms of your feet and use ground force to slowly rise to stand. One vertebrae at a time. Nice and slow, chin to the chest until you're all the way standing back into our Tadasana. And then when you're ready, we're gonna inhale, sweep the arms up, grab your left wrist, pull. With the exhale, lean over to the right. Inhale to center, switch your grip, pull up. Exhale, lean over to the left. Inhale to center. Once again, option for a back bend if you'd like. And with the exhale, swan dive, hinge at the hips and come into your fold. Inhale for your half lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Shoulders pulling away from the ears, lengthening the spine and the neck. Exhale, fold, plant your hands and step your feet back. Lower your knees to the ground if you'd like into our plank pose, we're gonna roll forward and then slowly taking our chaturanga all the way down or just halfway if you're going into your upward facing dog. Inhale for the back bend. With the exhale, coming into your downward facing dog or into your child's pose. And then slowly lowering your knees to the ground. back into your seat. 
All right, from here, we're slowly gonna lower our knees to the ground. And then we're gonna come down to our back. So you can cross your ankles and plant your hips. And then just make your way down for our final pose, Shavasana. So this is often referred to as one of the most important poses in yoga. So be sure not to skip this part. It's essential to let the rest of everything we just did really land and really be more effective when we seal it with our Shavasana. So here we want to bring our feet about mat distance apart, bring the toes to the corners of the mat. Let your arms rest alongside your body, your palms are facing up. And then maybe even shimming your shoulders down a little bit, lengthening the back of the neck, and then letting go of any lingering tension, resistance in your body, just melting into the ground. Letting your breath become natural. Close your eyes if you feel comfortable. You can even turn the lights down. And then let your tongue come away from the roof of the mouth. Let your eyes roll to the back of your head and take rest. If you find yourself distracted again, see if you can gently bring your attention to your breath, being aware. Not letting yourself fall asleep here, but feel relaxed. And ideally, we want to stay here for about three to five minutes. So feel free to pause the video, set a timer. And once you've had your three to five minutes in Shavasana, slowly start deepening your breath. Letting the awareness gradually come back to your body. Gently wiggle your fingers and your toes. Roll out your ankles and your wrists. And then with your next inhale, slowly reach your arms up overhead, point your toes and take a nice luxurious stretch. Getting as long as you can. And as you exhale, bend your knees and draw your thighs in towards your chest. Wrap your arms tightly around your legs. Maybe even gently pulling your nose up to your knees. Give yourself a hug. And then releasing your head to the ground, you can slowly start swaying side to side until you find yourself all the way to the left or right side of your body, whatever feels better for you. And then using your arm as a pillow under your head, just take a moment on your side body before getting up, keeping your eyes closed. <laughs> and engaging your senses, becoming aware of your surroundings. Just notice what's going on around you. Feeling the ground underneath you, supporting you, noticing the temperature of the room. Notice how different you feel now compared to when you began your practice. And then as you're ready, gently again using your hands to support you, you're gonna Roll yourself back up into your seated cross-legged position. So I would love to know, what do you guys think about this? How did you feel after you completed the practice? So yesterday's assignment was to let go of judgment and expectations and notice if you do have any of those arise. Today's homework assignment, I invite you to grab your journal and write down what you thought of today's practice. And if you found yourself distracted at any time, and if you were able to bring your attention back to your breath. So what does distracted mean? That can feel kind of vague when I say that. Distraction can be anything from your, your own thoughts when you start feeling down on yourself or insecurities or your lack of confidence in yourself or um, you know anything that takes you away from the present moment. 
It can even be your puppy that walks into your room and starts chewing on your hair as you're lying on your mat. It can be someone walking into the room as you're trying to settle into your meditation. Uh, it can be a rainstorm outside. It can be anything that takes you away from the present moment. So again, we are practicing how to go above our reactions and find that gap between the stimulus and the response. So instead of being reactive to our environment, we can learn how to pause and with wisdom respond. And once again, I, rem I want to remind you that doing yoga the right way is not about eliminating our distractions. It's about having compassion for ourselves and just becoming aware if we do see that we are letting our emotions or our, our distractions get the best of us and then just practicing just coming back into the present moment, uh, into our breath, to whatever brings us back to that feeling of peacefulness inside of us. So thank you so much once again. I hope to see you next time. Namaste.